Hello, everybody. Let's get my question. I am expecting a lot of questions today from you guys. This is Gina at Art of Skin Care. This is my Tuesday Live where I get up close and personal and where you guys get to ask questions and find out, you know, um, get those deep answers to those questions that you have. And in particular this week, I'm inviting you to ask questions about the Art of Skin Care devices. Um, live chat, my customer service team, they, they've been requesting this. They just said they get a lot of um, people asking questions on the website about how to pick a device, how to use a device, and, and that kind of thing. So I just wanted to open up today for that opportunity for you guys to ask those questions because sometimes there's questions I just don't even think of. I did want to open up um, with starting with the curve. Because I think of all my devices, the curve is the one that's probably most confusing when you come to the, the settings and how to use it. So I wanted to grab that for you and I wanted to show you guys what I've done to make this easier for myself because you've seen me on these lives. Even I'm going, okay, which button do I push? Which one for ultrasound? Which one for RF? And I can push, push, push and get myself all confused as well. So I made myself a cheat sheet. So I'm gonna show you right now. I have these little flashcards that I keep in my medicine cabinet. And so one of them, this one says the curve on it up in the corner. You can see my sloppy handwriting on there. Only I can read it. On one side I have RF and it tells me what to do for RF. So first thing is I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm gonna push the top button twice, and then it says push the bottom button twice. Now, bottom button twice is gonna give you a um, vibration that's intermittent. If you push it another time, you're gonna get a, long, uh, a longer time of vibrating, and then if you push it again, you'll just get solid vibration. So you can play with it and then, you know, how much vibration you want. With this device, and I have had these questions coming in, people want to know, how do I turn off vibrate? They don't want to use vibrate. With this device, you can't do that. With some of my other devices, you can turn off vibrate, but each device is different, and the unique thing about this one is you cannot turn off your vibrate. So RF mode, I have it written down on here, and then on the other side, I have CIV written. That's our cavitation or ultrasound mode. So ultrasound mode, I know that I'm going to push the power button on here four times and then I'm going to push select two times and then I know that I have it on my cavitation to do my ultrasound treatment. Now when I'm treating my face I'll use both. That ultrasound is going to help drive product into the skin, it's going to stimulate collagen, help plump the skin and I'm going to use that for probably five to ten minutes and then I'm going to change my settings to the RF side and I'm going to do RF for the same amount of time, five to ten minutes. RF is that skin tightening um, that you want to do with the curve. So skin tightening is what I want to think about when I'm thinking about my neck, that jawline, right? Even a little skin tightening around the forehead and whatnot, but mostly I'm wanting to use a little more ultrasound up there. So let's hit some of the questions that I get about this device. This device has this really comfortable hold for your hand. However, when people get it at home, they say, this device is too big for me. My face is really small. And so what I want to tell you is that the whole device does not have to have contact with your face in order for this device to work. The center plate is your ultrasound. So while you're doing the ultrasound, you do want to have that plate mostly in contact with your face. Now, when you're using ultrasound, you're doing gentle swirling movements around. Ultrasound is not something where you just want to do these little circles like this. Ultrasound is more this kind of moving it around, upward flowing, that kind of movement. Now, when you're doing RF, these are the little RF plates around the outside. So those little RF plates don't all have to be in contact with your skin at the same time. You just need to have contact with one of them 
in order to be getting some RF. So if you've got two of them making contact, that's good. Again, with RF, we're moving it around, keeping it active. Now, the nice thing about these little plates is that you can actually get up and get one of these little plates onto like your brow bone going above the eye. Remember, we're never holding these in one place for a prolonged period of time. They're always moving. So I can do a little bit of movement there. I can do a little bit underneath the eye area as well. I can do the forehead by just using two of the plates on the forehead area. I don't have to have this whole thing on my forehead in order for the RF to work. I just need to have one or two plates contacting that area. Now it's really nice on the neck because you can get a lot of those plates contacting the neck at the same time. But just keeping that in mind is they don't have to all be in contact. You can lift off, that's fine. You can come up and lift off and you're still gonna have a great result from this device. Now, another common question I get with this is they, you know, this device comes with, let me grab it, comes with this contour gel. This contour gel is for your body. So you wanna use, it's actually um, a serum. It's a, called the Body Curve Serum. So you're gonna use it on your body, on those areas where you're wanting to firm and tone the skin. If you want the best results, you're gonna use this serum on your body every day because it's really going to help. This serum is not a conductive gel. This device requires a conductive gel. So if you wanna use serums, you can put your serums on your body, you can put serums on your face, but then you're gonna to wanna to choose a conductive gel to put on. And the gel that I like to use for the body, I like to use the O2 Calming Gel, and I like to use the Isocell Recovery Solution. And there's a reason I choose these two together. Um, when you're thinking about a conductive gel, I have many people that say to me, well, I just use aloe vera gel as my conductive gel. Aloe vera gel is not a conductive gel. You could possibly make it into one by adding isocell to it. You've got to have trace minerals in your conductive gel in order for it to conduct electricity. The other thing you want to think about with a conductive gel is that you just spent all this money on a great device to try and plump the collagen, feed the skin, and your device is actually driving those ingredients into the skin. So if you, what you wanna look for in a conductive gel is a conductive gel that has beneficial ingredients in it. So when I look at O2 Calming Gel, let me get my glasses on, and I wanna tell you why I like this as a conductive gel because it's got this incredible range of products, um, incredible ingredients in it. So let me get in the right light so I can read to you guys from here. So of course, it's got some apple fruit water. Lemieux doesn't like to use plain water in anything, so they're gonna make their water special, and they do by using an apple water. Then we have a citrus of flower water. We've got hyaluronic acid. We've got green tea extract, so we've got these great antioxidant things from plants. We've got an oat leaf extract, so oat leaf is gonna be your calming and soothing ingredient. We've got a white tea extract. We've got chamomile in there, all kinds of calming things. We've got grapeseed extract, that's another great antioxidant for your skin. It's also antibacterial. We've got hydrasis, uh, let me get it right, golden seal. <laughs> We've got golden seal root in there, and um, that's really great for the immune system of your skin. We have got um, Arganea spinosa. Let's see what that is. It doesn't actually tell me. So Arganea spinosa leaf extract. We've got cucumber extract. Then we do have some aloe vera juice in there, which is nice. It has naturally occurring enzymes, and it's very soothing to the skin. We've got comfrey, and then we've got just carrot seed. I'm just working my way down now, kind of just skipping through some things, but you can see what I mean. For a conductive gel, this has a lot of very beneficial ingredients that you're going to be driving into your skin. When you're using the promoter collagen gel from Scopla, which is probably my first choice for the face, you're driving in healthy ingredients into the skin. You're sending in growth factors and peptides and all kinds of things 
that are gonna really help your skin to reduce more collagen and be healthier. So, you know, if you're gonna invest in this expensive device to boost your collagen, firm your skin, why not also use a conductive gel that has beneficial ingredients that are gonna be driven into your skin? So first we put on our serums, and then we put on a good conductive gel, and most of you know that I also use Isocell. When you're using your devices, it ha the skin has to be moist. Your device will not work if the skin is not wet. So you're gonna keep re-wetting your skin to keep the glide going. So if I've got out my curve and I'm doing a body treatment and it's not gliding anymore, it's dry and it's sticking, I'm gonna to wanna to spray either Isocell Recovery Solution on the skin to keep it wet or I'm going to want to apply the Isocell Recovery Solution. I can spritz with that and keep the skin wet with that for the entire time that I'm doing the treatment. Now, some people have said to me, um, I get so frustrated that it just dries out instantly so fast. Well, it could be the conductive gel you're using. I had that complaint a lot with people who thought that the contour serum was a conductive gel. So make sure you're actually using a conductive gel. Look for one that has a good amount of slip and just know you're always gonna have to keep adding some water to it to keep that slip and keep it moving. Now, a popular question we've had in the last week has been about the light stim. So if you have a light stim device, it is not using microcurrent, anything like that. You do not need to touch the skin with it. You can hold it just off the skin and you don't need to use a conductive gel with it because you're not conducting less electricity. You're just using the light. So when we brought out the MBK Wave, which really stimulated these questions about the light stem, I let you guys know that with this device, if you turn it on only on the photon, so only LED, you can hold it off the skin or hold it on the skin and you don't need a conductive gel because all you've got turned on, the, na the, the exciting thing about the Wave is it's so customizable. You can turn on all different modalities and you can turn on isolated modalities. You can make this thing vibrate or not vibrate, make it have LED or no LED. You can choose between red, green, or blue LED. You can have ion positive for cleansing or you can have ion negative for driving serums into the skin. And so, if you only have the LED portion of this turned on, you can just run it around the skin like this without a conductive gel. But if you're using this to drive serums into the skin and you've got it on ion negative, then you've got to have conductive gel on so that this little plate can conduct that electricity, that current in this specific frequency into the skin. That's been a big question this week, so I hope we got that quick, got that out of the way. So when I'm using my Curve, I'm grabbing my little cheat sheet, which I keep in a drawer, so you can go to my website, get a piece of paper or a little card, go to my website and just write down, make yourself a cheat sheet for the CIV settings and the RF settings. So I can just grab this out of my drawer in my bathroom and then I know just exactly what to turn on and it makes it really quick and easy. Now I've been using this device for my body. I've actually been using it next to the bed. I'm a lazy person. <laughs> so I'm all showered, clean, my face stuff is done. I've got this little card in my nightstand. So then I'm just putting on some of my O2 calming gel. I'm spritzing on with some Isocell and I'm doing my belly. I'm just, you know, because you guys can't see my belly, but I'm just doing my whole belly treatment for 15 minutes. I'll probably do 10 minutes of it on CIV and then I do 10 minutes on RF and that way I'm just kind of opening up the cells, flushing fat, getting circulation happening so I don't have that kind of bumpy, unhealthy skin going on. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for my legs. Put on the O2 calming gel, spritz it and I'm just gonna do a nice massage on my legs and I'm gonna use mostly on my legs, I'm doing the CIV, but if you're also wanting to tighten the skin, you can definitely do the RF, you know, you could do 10 minutes of each or even 15 minutes of each if you have that much time and you find it relaxing and you like to do that. 10 to 15 minutes is optimal. 
with this little device. And so it might be uh, 10 minutes on each leg or 10 or 15 minutes on your belly. Um, same thing with the face. It might just be 10 minutes of the ultrasound on the face and then 10 minutes of the RF on the face and on the neck lifting and toning. I love this device. It feels so good in my hand. It's just, it's a great device. Okay, so I wanna open it up here. I know you guys are gonna have more questions for me. I would like to ask you guys a question because I wanna see if anybody has noticed it. Maybe we'll have a little prize or something. So who can chat in here and tell me what is the newest device on the Art of Skincare website? And I'm gonna not tell you yet. I'm gonna let some people ask questions and then I'm going to introduce the new device to you in a, a little later on in our conversation here. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna look at questions because I know you guys have lots of them. My customer service team says it's blowing up <laughs> with questions. So we have Sergi here says, um, what is the difference between ultrasound device, Time Master, Mini Haifu, MBK Wave, MB Crew, and other items, and others in terms of ultrasound waves itself? So there are different um, frequencies of ultrasound. Some devices are stronger than other devices. I don't pretend to be an expert on every device available out there. So for instance, um, this person's asking me about, about the Haifu. I have no idea. And I, I haven't tested that device. I haven't done any research to know anything about it. So I can't tell you that. Um, we have the Time Master Pro listed here, the Wave the curve, and yes, all three of those devices have ultrasound in them. Some are a little stronger than others. Um, and some have other things that go with them. So it's hard to say, you know, I know that you, you just wanna know about the ultrasound waves and I didn't actually write down um, ben can look that up for me and, and we can get back to the answer to that. You can look on my website, but to know what are the actual um, oscillations per second on the ultrasound waves between the Time Master, the MBK wave, and the MBK curve. Um, we'll see if Ben or somebody can hop on here, maybe one of our team members at Art of Skin Care can hop on here and give us the exact numbers on what those are. The thing is, um, Devices have different strengths and weaknesses, right? Your Time Master um, Pro is gonna give you some ultrasound. It's also gonna give you some electronic muscle stimulation. It can be used, I use it to drive in the Cavapla serums. Um, it does not have a cleansing mode, so you can't use your ultrasound to do any kind of cleansing with that device. It's only about driving product in and using that um, electric muscle stimulation. Um, it does, you can turn it. What's nice about it is you can go low to high. It also has some LED component to it. Um, I always, I've been telling all my clients now, it's been what, seven, eight years that we've been selling the TMP and I just keep hitting home to you guys that have a TMP, use the lowest setting. Um, recently, um, the makers of TMP have even come out with one that has no electric muscle stimulation. You don't need that really strong muscle stimulation that the TMP provides in order to get results. Sometimes I'll have clients that say, oh, I've got it on the highest setting and I'm just not feeling the muscles twitching. And you know what? Your body's getting used to it. And also you don't need those muscles to twitch. You don't want them to twitch. It's not even something that you want. It's not healthy for your skin. So use the TMP on the lowest setting and know that you're getting excellent results with that device. The MBK Wave, we're getting, it's giving you the option to actually use it for cleansing the skin. Um, you can use it for applying your toner to your skin. And then you can also use those ultrasound to drive in all of the good ingredients and serums um, so that you're getting the most out of your money. It's got some LED, so you can use the blue LED when you're cleansing. You can use the green or the red LED when you're driving those serums into the skin and using the ultrasound that way. You could do it for a few minutes each day, just driving those serums in, use a little isocell recovery solution with it, or if you wanna do a longer ultrasound treatment like we do with the Curve for five, 10 minutes, you can do the same thing. Just use a conductive gel and you can use your wave in that way. Now the difference with the Curve, of course, is that the Curve only has red LED and it's a pretty weak LED. To be honest, it's not the strongest amount of LED. It's more diffuse. 
um, but you get RF. So you've got that RF and what the RF is doing is actually tightening the skin. So you're getting a little different kinds of action. You cannot use the curve to wash your face, but you can use the curve on the face and the body. Um, and that makes it really nice. Now, a number of people have been messaging in and asking, which is better for my eye area? I wanted something for my eye area. Should I use the TMP or the curve on my eye area? And I want to tell you, to be honest, the best device for your eye area is going to be the eye rejuvenator. And we have a new LED device coming in that's just specifically for the eyes. Those are the best things for the eyes. A TMP turned up too high can actually cause some bruising around the eyes. It's not designed for this delicate tissue around the eye area. I showed you with the curve how you can use the little RF disc to do a little bit of RF around the eyes. I still wouldn't, I wouldn't do 15 minutes of RF around the eyes, just a little bit. This device is not designed for the eye area where you're gonna get the best results with the eye rejuvenator because it's actually made for that area. You're gonna see, you're gonna see a lot of reduction in puffiness dark circles and the lifting and firming of crepey skin around the eyes with the eye rejuvenator. Um, the curve and the TMP are not made for your eye area. So to answer that question, let's see if I can get to the next question here. Jenny says, I have the Time Master Pro, the Wave, the Claire Blend Mini and a Nebulift RF. I do like them all, but how often to use each is a bit confusing and time consuming. I know what the manufacturers tell me, please help. So my advice to my clients has always been to, to not do them all on the same day. Wait a day and then do your next um, device. So you give your skin and your body time to, to um, adjust and and make um do the healing that is stimulated with each different device so um if you're using the curve use the curve one day um on ultrasound well you can do your ultrasound and your rf the same day with your curve um microcurrent i guess it's mainly microcurrent that i'm alternating with so i'm doing my ultrasound and rf on one day and then do the um, microcurrent on the next day if you're doing a device with RF, you want RF to be more spaced out. So ultrasound, you can do a little bit every day and that's not gonna be a problem, but the RF should be done every 72 hours. So you need to skip two days. On that microcurrent can be done a little bit every day or it can be done every other day. So if you kind of make up a little routine for yourself, that really helps to so you know what day you're doing. Like Sunday is my, um, my microcurrent day and I just do microcurrent once a week. So on Sundays I do my microcurrent treatments and then every day I'm doing a little bit of ultrasound every single day and then I'm just working my RF in once a week. So I hope that's helpful. That's my, my way of doing it. I'm sure everybody has their own their own things. Now, sometimes people say, yeah, but when I go to my esthetician and she does a treatment on me, she does all those modalities. And yeah, that's true and that's fine, but she's only doing all those modalities on you usually once, every, once a month. Once every four or five weeks is when you normally go in to your esthetician and that's when they're doing all those things at one time. Now, the exception to that is microcurrent. And with microcurrent, we'd like to set a benchmark. So your esthetician, if you're having professional microcurrent done for lifting and reshaping and doing some corrective things, she might have you in there every other day for a few weeks and then back down to a couple times a week, then once a week, and then maybe once every other week, and then once a month. Once she's really got you, he or she has got a benchmark going for your skin. So... <sighs> Jenny says, can I use IsoCell with the Time Master Pro? I thought you weren't supposed to use water with it. I don't want to break it. Um, yes, we do use IsoCell with the Time Master Pro because if you're doing a long treatment, especially, you've got to have continual slip on the skin. So you're not submersing your Time Master Pro. You're just spritzing some water or get some water on your hands and pat it onto your skin just so there's some moisture on your skin so that you get slip and that will not damage your device. 
I do have an answer here from Ben. Thank you, Ben. On our waves per second on ultrasound, the TMP has 90,000 waves per second. The curve has 300,000 waves per second, so it's the high bell ringer. And then the wave has 50,000 waves per second. So the wave is a little bit lower than the TMP is at, so the wave is at 50K, TMP at 90, the curve is 300. So I hope that helps answer some questions around there. Now keep in mind that the wave, the reason why it's a little bit lower is the wave is that device that you can use every day. I call it my skincare hammer. <laughs> if you're a carpenter, you just carry your hammer on your belt and you use it every day. Well, that's what, for me, that's what the wave is. I carry it on my belt and I use it every day. And then my TMP or my curve are things that I don't use as often. And they're when I'm doing a little boosted or stronger treatment. Okay. What is the overall best device for jowls and loss of elasticity under the chin and neck? Number one, best device, my secret device, is the Curve. The Curve is gonna be that one that's really providing that skin tightening that you want. That said, there are other devices that also work to firm um, and, and redensify the skin. So. You know, it used to be that we just used microcurrent to lift and mostly microcurrent is, I have to qualify because most traditional microcurrent devices target muscles. So they're working to firm those muscles under the skin. Well, what happens if it's not so much muscle deterioration as you've lost your fat pad and your collagen and just your skin is getting really thin and the skin looks like it's drooping off the bones, that's, if you're just using microcurrent to address the muscles, you are maybe not gonna see the results that you wanna see because you've got some other issues going on in your skin. So if you've got a thinning of your skin going on, you may need to be supplementing that microcurrent with things like RF, because that RF is gonna go after the surface skin and tightening the matrix of the skin in that way. And then also you're going to want to use some collagen inducing things like your ultrasound or um, there's some um, next generation microcurrent that's going on. Um, I'm actually working on developing a device now. It's a next generation microcurrent device that will actually work on um, redensifying the skin. So that skin that's starting to get too thin, which is just the hardest thing as an esthetician, that's the hardest thing for us to work on is when the skin is losing its density. How do you redensify that skin? So we're learning lots of things that do help with that. One of them is the Emapel line that's helping to redensify the skin. And I'm also working on a new microcurrent device that works on a number of different frequencies that work within the skin to redensify that skin tissue as well. But number one, main thing I would say to get in there with the curve. And so let's see if I get my next question here. Is isosol enough of a conductor with the wave? No. You've got to have a gel. So you can put on the O2 calming gel. Put on your O2 calming gel and then spray on your isocell to give it those um, trace minerals to help conduct and then work it over. But just putting water on the skin or just putting the trace minerals just from the isocell recovery solution, that is not going to give you as good of a treatment as if you also use a conductive gel in there. Um, you spend a good money on this device, right? You wanna get the best use of it. So you wanna use a good conductive gel and use um, either spritz with water if you have a really good conductive gel or use that combination of conductive gel and isocell recovery solution because you know you spent a lot of money on this device you want to get the best results you can don't go looking for the cheapest thing to use with your device because you won't get the results you won't get the same level of results you go out and buy a big bottle of aloe vera gel and use that on your skin, you're not gonna get the results and then you're gonna wonder why and you're gonna be frustrated. If you're gonna spend the money on this device and the time, you know, it's time, right? 15, 30, 45 minutes, a couple times a week using this device, you wanna be using a quality conductive gel and a quality spray with it. 
That's my soapbox on conductive gels. Okay. Oh, every I've got all the guesses coming in. The newest device on our on our site. We have a number of people guessing the wave, the wave, the wave, the wave. And then Joseph. Joseph, you're so brilliant. Joseph got it. It's the skin flower. So people ask, what in the heck is a skin flower? And so we did have a couple people come in and say, oh yeah, the MBK skin flower. So here's my skin flower. We'll ha have some more videos coming out on this little device. This is what's known as a skin spatula. And many of you may know that I used to sell the Lemieux skin spatula until COVID hit and they couldn't get the products for the, they couldn't get the electronics for it anymore. And it's been out of stock for what, a year now? I think it's still out of stock with Lemieux. And so I started shopping around and looking for another skin spatula. Now I've been testing the skin flower for a little while, but I was really torn for you guys because the skin perfecter is half the price of the skin flower. And I was just torn about, you know, do I want to offer this with that big of a price difference? Is it worth it? And what it came down to is, is it worth it? And so when we start doing side-by-side -side tests in the treatment room with these two devices and everybody hands down went, oh, I will never use this device again. I only want the skin flower. So the, the things about the skin power, flower, it's so funny because both these devices say that they are the same strength. But when you get in and start using it to clean your pores and work your skin, you immediately see that it may be the same power, but this is way more effective. There's something better about this device. It's much sturdier. The um, skin perfecter doesn't allow you to change from ion negative to ion positive. It's just a low or a pulsing vibration or high. And so what they want you to do is use one side to clean the skin and then the other side to lay product into the skin, but it's not actually changing your ions. So the skin flower allows you to do that. We have Sonic, which is for cleansing the skin. So you use it with water on the skin or isocell recovery solution. Generally, when doing this treatment on yourself, you're probably going to want to have a spritz bottle of water because it's going to spray and it will spray in your eyes. And it's not bad, but water is more comfortable in the eyes than isocell or any other solution. When we use this in a treatment room, we actually even put enzymes on the skin and use it to scrape the enzymes off of the skin. But you can't do that with somebody with their eyes open because those enzymes will fly right in their eyes. But it's fabulous with water. So we put water on the skin and we use this side on Sonic to get in there and actually clean the pores of the skin. I love this device for doing that. Um, sebaceous filaments, any kind of little gunk in your pores just lifts it up, vibrates it out. It actually vibrates it up onto the surface of the spatula. So if you're like me and you're fascinated by that stuff, you'll see everything you're pulling right out of your skin. Now, when you then when you turn it on lifting mode, you flip it over so that the button sides are down, you put on your serums, then you put on your isocell and you drive the serums into your skin on the lifting mode. So that's pretty cool about this device. Yes, it is our newest device and Joseph guessed it. I'm gonna have um, somebody reach out to Joseph and send him a, a special gift. I have a special um, deluxe sample pack for you, Joseph, and we'll get it in the mail to you so you can try some of our new things at Art of Skin Care. So, Oh, Jenny says, MBK has the best customer service ever. Very safe to order from them. Jenny, that's absolutely right. They provide amazing customer service. Every now and then you get a device that won't hold a charge or something goes wonky with it and they are so fast to get you a new one. They're just right there. Here, we take care of that. It's amazing. It's awesome. Um,
Lisa's giving some information about Haifu. And there is some controversy around that. I, and I don't know enough. So Lisa might be the expert to go to on that. I don't know who she is, if you're an expert on it either, but there's ultrasound for the body. Um, there's ultrasound that's used for muscle healing and stuff when you go into a physiotherapist, physical therapist or your doctor and they do treatment with you on your body. That strength and intensity of ultrasound is too strong for your face. Um, it, so you wanna make sure, and I'm sure this Haifu, I don't know, I'm sure it's, maybe it's for the face or maybe it's for the body, I don't know, like I said, but you wanna make sure that your ultrasound is calibrated for the skin and for the thin facial tissues that you have on your face and not calibrated for body use. Um, Paula says, thanks for scheduling advice. Yes, yeah, scheduling advice, how often to use things. She says, I've always wondered if I was overstimulating my skin and I absolutely think you can overstimulate your skin and we're all trying to create balance and homeostasis and you can just wear your skin out by overstimulating it. You can cause inflammation by too much stimulation. Definitely that TMP, if you're using it on the highest amount and you're using it for that full 20 minutes and you're doing that too many times a week, you're stimulating too much inflammation and long-term um, inflammation's not good. So that's gonna lead to a decrease in collagen instead of an increase. So maybe at first you're getting this nice plump swelling and that looks really great, but over time you're gonna see collagen loss from doing that. Okay. Julie actually had the question on the curve, 300,000 waves per second. I want to tell you that actually, we just had to update the curve. I think that it might, I think the curve, I don't quote me on this, you guys, but I'm thinking the curve is now, somebody pop on here, Jake or Celine. We just got new specs from the curve. So um, when we had that price increase on the curve, what they neglected to tell us is that they improved the curve and that box won't tell you. So Ben's looking at the box. Um, so um, that just let me say that it might be twice that much on the ultrasound. Check back with us. Check in with Lindsay. She knows exactly what the numbers are. I know that um, the curve has increased its RF strength and increased its ultrasound waves per second. And I'm thinking it's 670 waves per second now. So... Maybe somebody will pop in here and let us know what those new numbers are. And that's been going on for a while. We didn't, we're reporting that on our websites and in the manual still was the old manual. Um, so pretty much from the time we've been carrying the curve, it's been at the stronger strength. We just didn't know about it because you know, with a big company, with any kind of company, even my company, my little company, Sometimes the left hand forgets to tell the right hand what it's doing, and they had that issue over there at MBK. They improved the device without telling the um, education team. So, so there might be a little difference there. Okay, let's see. We have somebody here that says, I'm 45 and most concerned with crepey skin on my, necks, on my neck. Will the MBK curve help with crepey skin? Yes because it's gonna firm that skin, but you also want to use the ultrasound with that because that's gonna help plump that skin. And then I'm also gonna tell you to go get Neogenesis Recovery Serum and Skin Serum. Use those on your neck because they are gonna make a big difference with crepey skin, huge. If you go to um, the Neogenesis website, um, you can actually see before and after pictures, testimonials and you can see the difference on crepey skin, hands down, it's amazing, it's amazing stuff. So devices are great. Devices are a great support tool, but there's nothing better than feeding your skin the correct diet, right? You know, we have to eat the right foods in order to have a healthy body and have a healthy skin. It's the same kind of concept with your health of your skin. 
and your face is that you've got to be putting quality, good products on your face, professional strength products on your skin. If you're gonna spend the money, $500, $700, $2,000 on a device for your skin, but you don't invest that, uh, invest the money in professional skincare, you're not gonna get the results that you wanna see. I have clients message into me who watch these YouTubes, and there's a lot of you guys on YouTube that just want devices, and you love those devices, and they'll say to me, you know, I'm using great skincare, I'm using oil of Olay, and I'm using this and that, and I hate to be the one to tell them, it's like, no, that's not good skincare. You need, you need to take your skincare to the next level. If you're not doing both, you're not gonna get the results that you're looking for. So, there's that. So, with crepey skin, Neogenesis Recovery Serum or Skin Serum or both, and then use your curve, absolutely. Um, Robin says, does the Mitama help redensify the skin? Yes, it does. And that's similar to the device that I'm working on right now to help redensify the skin. Um, Let's see who's next. I went too far and I lost people. Here we go. Um, Jenny says, I use serums and isocell for the wave. Yes, absolutely, that's perfect. Um, because you're just using the wave to drive those ingredients in. Now, if you want to do a longer ultrasound treatment and get more benefits from that ultrasound, just apply some conductive gel and use your isocell with a conductive gel and you can do a longer treatment. You're not gonna be able to go for 10 or 15 minutes with just serums and isocell. It's not gonna be enough um, conductive lubricant on there for you to have that longer treatment. Um, this person saying the Emma Pell is so expensive. Do you get very much for that price? Yes. Honestly, I've had my Emma Pell serum since October, November, and I haven't run out yet. So it lasts a long time, four months or more. And the same with the night cream. It lasts a long time, a very long time, much longer than most other products last. Because you don't have to use too much. You're just using one pump of the serum a day and then just a, enough of the night cream so that you get it over the entire face. But I have to be honest with you, I was so excited about that night cream that I was putting on thick, like a mask at night. And it's still lasting me forever. <laughs> so yeah, those products last a long time. Okay, um, this person says that they love their curve. Can't wait to show the group my before and afters. Um, Yes, CJ has been showing. If you're not an insider on Facebook, um, go to Facebook, ask to join the Art of Skin Care Insiders, and that's where um, some of you guys, CJ in particular, um, share before and after pictures, share products that work for them or don't work for them, ask advice of each other, and we've had some wonderful shares of people um, showing before and afters using these different devices. So. I'm so excited, I can't wait to see those before and afters either. I saw a quick before and after, but she's also gonna do the long-term before and after, and I'm super excited. <laughs> and then here's a question. Will Dr. Estee Renewal Serum work best for crepey skin? Uh, no, the best thing for crepey skin is Neogenesis Recovery Serum and Skin Serum. I also, though, I'll sneak another product in. I like to put on top of those Rhonda Allison's BioReform 28. Those three together, or just pick one of the two serums and then the BioReform 28, and your skin will be plump and juicy and smooth again. Of course, remember to exfoliate, right? The body, the neck, everything needs a, at least a weekly exfoliation. So, you know, doing a nice exfoliation on your skin and then putting on your serum so they can really penetrate and then putting on that BioReform 28. I use that on my arms. I use the BioReform 28 on my legs. It just, it really handles, that combination really handles crepey skin. And of course it's by degrees. If you're just a little bit crepey, not that crepey, you could probably get away with just using BioReform 28 from Rhonda Allison. But if you've got some more serious crepe going on, you're gonna to wanna to get out those bigger guns 
and you're gonna to wanna to use Recovery Serum, Skin Serum, and Bioreform 28. And then once a week, you're gonna to wanna to throw in there Rhonda Allison's Peel Cream and get that good exfoliation going. So we'll be talking more about body. Ben and I are gonna make a little video for you guys for while I'm gone on my vacation this year. And while I'm gone, um, we'll share a little bit more of my body secrets, what I combine, how I mix. I like to make cocktails for everything, right? So I have some cocktails for my body that I like and I'll share those with you guys. Joseph says, rest in peace, skin perfecter. Yeah, you know, Joseph, you could probably sell that thing on eBay. You know, there's a lot of people been asking me for that device since Lemieux hasn't been able to manufacture it. So you could probably sell it on eBay, probably for the same price you paid for it. Um, let's get down here. CJ says, you guys have wonderful customer service too. We really try. We try to do our best. And um, Lindsay and Lauren and Julie and customer service, they have amazing patience and they really care about each of you guys and your concerns. So I, I just love them. We have an awesome team. Um, we're launching the new website tomorrow. Don't hesitate to reach out to them. Um, report any issues or bugs that you find. You may get try to hit a link. It'll take you to a 404 redirect or something. Just let them know on live chat and they have a log sheet. They're going to be writing down all the little funky things that are happening so that we can fix them as quickly as possible. And also on that note of the new website, I know Madeline announced this last week. I'm going to announce it again in case there's anyone else here. You are going to need to reset your password. So um, when we switch platforms, we don't take your um, personal information like passwords, credit card numbers, we don't take those over to the new platform. That's all protected information. So on the new website um, tomorrow, you will need to hit um, forgot my password. Just say forgot my password and it'll send you, you know, give you the form to redo your password. When you do that, watch your email because you're going to get an email with a special 10% off code to thank you for updating your password. It's also doing another thing to help us because we've changed our URL a little bit. URL is not the right word. There's another technical word for it, but because we've made this change, it's going to affect our emails. So if you guys are used to emailing us for things, just know that for the first week or two, our emails are going to be landing in your junk mail or your spam folder. You can do us a big favor by going and finding those emails. So when you reset your password, go and look in your junk or spam. You can open up the junk mail and then just type in art of skincare in the search bar and it'll bring it up to the top for you. Go ahead and mark that as not junk or not spam and then click on the link to go back to our website and use, and then you can use your coupon code to get 10% off your next purchase. But doing that, going and getting that out of spam and saying this is not junk is going to help us with our Google ratings so that our emails stop landing in the spam folder. It's so frustrating. I know for you guys who do consultations and I email you out your beautiful new protocols and they land in your junk mail. So uh, we want to try and get our standing with Google back up to top notch right away so that those emails aren't landing in that junk mail folder. Okay, Sarah says, hydroquinone, heard a product like something with 15% and 20% azelic acid um, needed because over-the-counter azelic acid is weak. True. Over-the-counter, any of those things over-the-counter are going to be super weak. Um, your thoughts on serums and devices you do for hyperpigmentation, melasma on pale olive skin. Sounds like my skin. I get the melasma as well. So hydroquinone, um, if you're going to use it, use it for very short periods of time. Um, just use it for like three months and then go off of it. Uh, I choose myself not to use hydroquinone. I find that um, hyperpigmentation is actually an inflammatory disorder. And if I do anything that causes inflammation or irritation on my skin, I'm going to get more hyperpigmentation. So my philosophy and the, my clients that I work with, we have great success but we work in a much more gentle manner with the skin. For instance, we choose to use Bellus Perennis, which is a daisy flower extract. We use that in place of hydroquinone. It's actually 
just as strong as hydroquinone, but it doesn't have the negative effects. And even with Bellis Perennis, when we're using it in a really strong concentration, we only use it for three months at a time, and then we take three months off of it. Um, for melasma, my favorite device would be the Wave, the MBK Wave. Um, you can use the LED on that. It's not too strong. It doesn't create too much heat in the skin. The Wave doesn't get really hot. It'll have a little warmth, but it's just skin temperature warmth when you're using ultrasound. Ultrasound reflects back that same heat of your skin. So it'll feel a little warm, but it's not generating more heat and adding heat to the face. So it's not going to cause that melasma reaction from heat. Um, it does not, um, light stem can be a problem, right? For those with melasma like myself or hyperpigmentation, that light stem is really powerful. It's amazing for people who have a lot of sun damage and skin problems. But if you're prone to melasma, you're going to have to hold it a bit off the skin and move it around so that it doesn't heat up the tissues on the face. Where the MBK Wave, where is it? Here's my buddy. The wave can actually, is not going to heat up your skin and you can use it more safely. It also has green. And believe it or not, green LED has actually been shown to be more effective for acne and hyperpigmentation. They're both inflammatory type disorders of the skin and that green LED works really well for those. So MBK wave is my, my device of choice for um, people with that kind of issue. Now, microcurrent device, you can use microcurrent. It's not going to hurt your, it's not gonna affect, it's not gonna cause hyperpigmentation. It's not gonna really help that much either, but, but you're safe to use it. Um, would the flower help with removing milia? So the milia is a special case. So a milia, in case anyone doesn't know, is a little white, hard, round seed under the skin and as it rises up to the surface, it becomes a hard bump, but it's completely closed over with skin. So to try and use the skin scrubber to lift it off, it just, it won't do that um, because it is embedded. It's underneath the skin there. I have had good luck with people using Mandelic serums, um, using uh, one of our brands of Mandelic Serum, that often helps pull that milia up to the surface. And occasionally I've had someone say it's making it worse, but it's not making it worse. That when they say it's making it worse, it's not because they're getting more of them, it's because that bump is getting appear appearing to get larger. What it's doing though is it's not getting larger, it's bringing it up to the surface. When it gets really close up there to the surface, you can actually take a lancet and just poke it a little bit and stretch a hole. <laughs> I hate telling you guys this, be careful with yourself, don't hurt yourself. You poke it with a little lancet, stretch the little hole a little bit, and usually it's best to have somebody else help you with it, and then gently press that um, ball out of the skin. Um, that is the best way. Um, another way I know of doing it is to poke them and then put on our TCA, do our TCA cream peel every day to help um, pull that up and the TCA will actually dry it up and then it'll flake off. Uh, so that's a couple things that you can do for Amelia. Mostly with Amelia, you wanna keep your, your barrier really well supported. You never wanna to be too dry. Um, Neogenesis Barrier Renewal is a cream that you can put on over other moisturizers that prevents trans epidermal water loss and that's going to help people who tend to get milia. And then you want to avoid ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is just a little uh, too strong and too irritating for certain people who are milia prone. There's other vi kinds of vitamin C you can use, but not the actual L-ascorbic acid. Okay, let's see what we got here. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody got it in the manual. You're right. Uh, CJ says, the curve says it's 670 per second, and that's true. So it, we used to think it was 300, but it's not. It's actually 670 per second, and the RF is 500 kilohertz, and those are the correct numbers. Um, some of our curves that are going out right now have the old manual that says that it has the lower numbers, but they don't. They all are the higher numbered ones. Um, 
Germany is aware of the problem. They're working on reprinting our manuals for us, and so we're getting that, that all corrected. Um, we actually messaged them yesterday afternoon, and I heard that they were actually emailing him back and forth until one in the morning, <laughs> this morning, figuring out what was going on because the manual was saying one thing and the device, our websites were saying another thing, and, and they finally figured out the left hand wasn't talking to the right hand, and so <laughs> we're, we're gonna figure it out, though. It's all good. All righty. Um, what is the best conductive gel for the eye rejuvenator? So the eye rejuvenator does not necessarily need a conductive gel. You're only using it for a very short amount of time. The best thing to do with an eye rejuvenator is apply your eye serum, and many of the eye serums have good slip to them. I'm working on a document for you guys right now that kind of rates the amount of slip that our different eye serums have. So some eye serums have more slip than others, and you'll want to use one that has a little better slip for doing your eye area. So for instance, if you're using a vitamin C serum that's for the eyes around here and it has no slip, you would put that on first. Then you might put on Ocerella Apothecary Aloe Cucumber Gel. It has wonderful slip. Um, Neogenesis Eye Serum has a medium high slip. Um, so you want to use one of those that has a bit more slip and you work it in that way. And then many of my clients, if they're older, they're using an eye serum and they're also using an eye cream because the serums can go right into this um, lid area and then your creams go on the orbital bone. So once you've used your device to work in those serums, then you can put some of your eye cream, dot it onto the orbital bone, and then you can use your device to work that cream into the skin as well. Now, the microcurrent is not going to be as effective with a cream as it is with a gel, but it's still going to have some effect. So it's fine to use it with an eye cream, but you're going to get the best conductivity and the best use of it using your eye serums or eye gels. If you have a product that, like um, Rhonda Allison's Eye and Lip Renew Serum, or Lemuse Eye Serum, they those will not work with your eye rejuvenator because they are oil-based. When you put them on, they're like a mermaid look, right? They have that opalescent look on them and they're very oily. And those you just keep on the orbital bone out here and don't even bother using your eye rejuvenator with that because it's not gonna work. The microcurrent's not gonna work. The heat would be nice. You could use it just for the heat factor because the heat will help drive, <laughs> drive it in, but you'll need to clean it well afterwards. But those kind of serums that are oil-based like that, those don't work with your, your electronic devices. Okay. Let's see if I've hit everybody. Best serum, for, best serum for under eye crepiness. I might have done this one already. Maybe I didn't. Oh no, there's something about. Let me keep going up. There's more and more messages coming in. So here we go. Um, oh, there we are. Best conductive gel. Next question is about. It's just somebody said they're checking in. They're from England. Wonderful to have you. And then we have Jenny. I can't wait to see the new device. Yes, you'll get to see a video of the, the skin flower while I'm on my vacation. We've already recorded it. Ben will be sharing it with you guys and that'll be a lot of fun. Um, we've got, what device are you using to densify the skin? I just popped in. So Valentina, you can go back and listen. Redensifying the skin, your ultrasound can help some with that, redensifying the skin, you're gonna to wanna to be using your Emma Pell serums and creams. And my message to everyone, and, and, and you have it, you have a Mitama device. I was letting everybody know that I'm creating a microcurrent device that helps with that, but you have a Mitama, so that will help you with that. Uh, let's see, Sarah, best serum for under eye crepiness. I would say two of them, two favorites, and it's gonna be Antiage Eye Serum or Neogenesis Eye Serum. Either one of those are pretty darn amazing for crepiness, and you can take them right up um, onto the lids because I know sometimes um, 
as we get older, that crepiness can come right up to the lash line even. And so both of those are just amazing. I was on a river rafting trip this week and I brought the, it was such an easy travel container, I brought the Antioch eye serum with me and we were all passing it around because being around a campfire, being exposed to all that air, every morning we'd wake up and we all had crepiness all around our eyes. And we were loving it because we'd pass around the Antioch eye serum and work it in, give ourselves a little eye massage and work it in and miracle, 100% miracle all that crepiness was gone. So we were loving that. I also took my Neogenesis um, moisturizer, uh, intense moisturizer, berry renewal lotion, and I grabbed a product from Farmhouse Fresh. It's their nighttime resveratrol antioxidant serum, and we all used it every day because it was the strongest antioxidant serum I could find. And we were all putting that on every day and our skin was just glowing and amazing. So the travel things we traveled with, we brought, I brought the Antioch eye serum and then I brought that resveratrol from Farmhouse Fresh and then intensive moisturizer from um, Neogenesis and Barrier uh, Renewal from from Neogenesis because that barrier product, that's what's preventing that transepidermal water loss. So when you're outdoors all day, you need that on there. And then of course, Extreme Protect. We had that all over our face, our sunscreen every day. But it did a great job. We were all just so amazed at how good our skin looked, only doing our skincare once per day because by the time you get off the raft at night and you're eating dinner and it's dark and you're sitting at your tent, there was, we were just exhausted. We were not doing a nighttime skincare routine. <laughs> but the morning one we did, we would massage our face. When we were cleansing, we would do our two minute massage and then we put on the serums and everything and our, all of our skin glowed. <laughs> it was our little morning as special pampering on a camping trip. <laughs> okay, let's get down here. We've got eye crepiness. I just bought the Nelly DeVos Lifting Peptide Serum. Also have Emma Pell Serum. Are they okay to use together? Lifting peptides, Emma Pell. I don't see a problem with using those together. Lifting peptides, they're both vitamin C serums. You might alternate days or use one in the morning, one at night. Um, and also, you know, you might just use, start with one of them for the first few weeks. I mean, Emma Pell is very active. You're gonna feel it, most people feel it. When you put on your Emma Pell serum or night cream, your skin's gonna stingle for two minutes and even turn pink, you're gonna flush. And that's all good and it's normal. But you might not want to pile on another vitamin C serum on top of that um, when you're first getting used to it. And, you know, once your skin is more used to it, you can maybe do that. On a side note, you don't need both those serums. Um, they're both vitamin C peptide serums. So you've kind of got some duplication going on. And the, um, the Emma Pell one has the benefit of also having the MEP, which is gonna help bind those estrogen receptors in the skin so that you are still producing the collagen you wanna produce. So you might try alternating them or using one in the morning, one at night. Some ideas for you. Uh, Priya says, I just bought the MBK Curve. What setting on the curve do I use for fat reduction on the body? So you're gonna wanna do both. So you'll get your little card that you're gonna make for yourself. And on one side, you're gonna put RF. On the other side, you're gonna put your settings for CIV and you're gonna do 10 minutes of each on the area that you are treating. And next person. Your suggestion for the darkening on either side of no, nose bridge, probably because of shrinking of orbital bone. I'm picturing what you're saying. So are you thinking of you've got some sunken eyelids as we lose that fat pad, this area gets more sunken in here? I'm thinking that's what you're saying. So you're gonna wanna go to check out on Art of Skin Care, look for Dr. Estes C Talks. Um, it's a letter C. Um, so it's a vitamin C cream, detoxifies the eye area. It's got some retinol in it. It's gonna help to 
um, plump this area and do some rebuilding in this area. Also the MBK eye rejuvenator. And of course, um, you've got to either use the Antiage eye serum or the Neogenesis eye serum first underneath those because they're doing that deeper work that has to happen to strengthen that area. And then the other things are working more topically, but also very effective. Okay, Carol says, would taking collagen internally, like in coffee, help? There's mixed reviews on actually taking collagen um, and how that will help the skin. So, Mixed reviews, can't tell you for sure on that. What I can tell you are, is that there are things that you can take that support collagen in your body. We have some supplements on our website, Collagen Love is one of them. And what they're doing is rather than taking collagen in hopes that it helps increase your collagen, they're actually those building blocks that you need so that your body can produce the collagen that it needs. And I think that is a more beneficial and more time-tested way to do that. Jenny says she uses conductive gel with the eye rejuvenator. That's not a problem. You can definitely do that. Not a problem at all. Jenny says that she wants to do a consult. She says, I just can't wing it on, on my own. I'm learning. You're Keep tuning in. I share as much as I can here, but it is really helpful to do a consult because I just can't impart everything and exactly how to use things um, to everybody as a, as a large group. You know, when I can dial in and I can say specifically to you and what I see happening in your skin, um, that's a little different. So Lauren is an esthetician. She's my assistant. And Lauren and I work together on a, all of those um, protocols that we create for people and really make sure that you understand how to use your products correctly. Carol says, best for 74-year-old eyes is Neogenesis. Yay, thank you for sharing that. She's getting great results. I have to tell you, I have found the same thing. I mean... I was just using Neogenesis for a while, just once a day. And um, for the last month or so, I've been using it twice a day and I've seen total transformation of my area using that twice per day. Um, Paula wants to know, can you name the collagen supplement again? Yes, there's one on our website called Collagen Love. So you can check that out, Collagen Love. Um, Sarah says, actually nose bridge beside inner eyes. So are you thinking like where, are you thinking like where glasses would sit? Because if you wear glasses, that can cause some indents there. And I'm, I'm not sure if you're gonna continue to wear glasses, you're probably not gonna be able to reverse that. But otherwise I would still say the same things. The C talks from Dr. S.A., the eye rejuvenator, use that all over that entire area. I even use it on my 11s and on my kitty whiskers on here and using that Neogenesis eye serum, of course, first. So put on your Neogenesis, Neogenesis eye serum, use your MBK to work that into the skin. Um, if you want to get a little more action out of it, you can use the, put a little bit of isocell recovery solution on your fingers if it's drying out too fast. Or as um, Jenny said, you could use a little conductive gel. It's not gonna hurt you to use that around the eyes. And then you're gonna to wanna to get out your, let that dry completely, then get out your C-tox and work the C-tox in again using your rejuvenator and just use that on this orbital bone area around the eyes. It does not go onto the lid area. That'll cause irritation. I did that and I caused some irritation with that product in my own eyes. So, and I know better. <laughs> so, okay. And then we have Melissa says, is the NG barrier renewal and booster too heavy in the summer? I also use the recovery in the morning only. So if you were gonna use recovery only once a day, I would probably use it at nighttime. Just because at nighttime is when you're, you're, when you're sleeping is when your body's doing the most regenerating and healing, and that's when you want that support that recovery is giving you. So if you have booster and recovery, use booster in the morning and use recovery at night if you want to you know, break that up and use them at two different times. Um, for moisture in the summertime, 
if you're concerned about oiliness, whatnot, use the moisturizing mist. That's the moisturizer for oilier skin. And then just use a tiny bit of the barrier renewal on your drier areas to give you that transepidermal water loss protection. Because even though clients are oily, they often come to us dehydrated. Their skin does not have enough water in it. So you're gonna get water in your skin by washing your face twice a day, because that is the most important way to get a big drink of water in your skin. The surfactants in your cleanser are gonna break that tension on the skin and allow water to get in. And then spritzing with the moisture mist, that's gonna give you that drink of water. And then just seal it in with a little tiny bit of barrier renewal to keep it all in there. And guess what? We did it. We're at the bottom. And it's 12.40. I can never finish by 12.30. Thanks, you guys, for hanging in and answer, asking all of your questions. I hope you found this helpful today. If you need to, just reach out to live chat. We've got excellent support over there. And if they don't know the answer, they just trot over to me and they ask me the question, and we'll get you the answers that you need. Sometimes we reach out to the manufacturer when we don't know the answer, but we will always get the answers for you guys. So have a wonderful day and I will actually see you in three weeks. I'll be gone for the next two weeks having my little sabbatical and then I will be back the week after that. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna make some videos for you guys this week that Ben can share with you while I'm gone to keep you guys plugged in and giving you more helpful information. We'll have a video coming out using the eye rejuvenator and different eye serums. And we'll have a video coming out showing you how to use the skin flower um, to do the exfoliation on your skin and then drive serums into the skin. And probably a few other things. We'll come up with some stuff. So anyway, I look forward to talking to you guys all again in a few weeks. Take care.